Hi guys, welcome back to In Case of Econ Struggles. Today I'm doing warp round two. That previous warp video had a little bit of an issue in it, so I'm going to redo that today. So timestamps are below if you would like to jump around, but let's go ahead and get right into it. So the intuitive example or story when we're talking about warp. So here's a little comment called The Life of Bill and Warp. And so what's happening is Bill is going to a diner. He's going to order some pie. Dave's the waiter and Dave's taking his order. And Dave says, all right, Bill, today's pie choices are apple and berry. Which pie would you like? And Bill says, I would like the berry pie, please. Dave goes in to bring in his order, but then he comes back and he says, oh, I'm so sorry. We also have cherry pie. Would you like to change your pie order? Now, Bill, in this instance, thinks about it for a second. And then he says, oh, actually, since you have cherry pie, I'd actually like apple pie, please. And then Dave is standing there. He has no idea what to do. He has no idea what just happened. He's like, why on earth would you switch to apple knowing that you had apple before? Why would you pick this now just because you have cherry? And Dave is just having sort of like a brain meltdown trying to think about this order. Okay, And so that's a warp violation. And that's what we're going to talk about today. And so the basic idea of warp is just internally consistent. So the weak axiom revealed preference is just to be internally consistent. So if we think about how this works sort of mathematically, what happened is that in the first choice, Bill had two options, apple and berry. I'll call them A and B. And so in his first choice, he said that berry was definitely weakly preferred to apple. And so he picked berry over apple. Now, when Bill made the second choice, he had three options, apple, berry, or cherry, and he decided to pick apple. So, of course, he's going to say that apple is better than cherry. That's not the issue. The issue is by picking apple out of this choice set, he said that apple was preferred to berry, even though before he had just said that berry is preferred to apple. So what happened is in both the first and the second choice, both apple and berry were available to Bill and Bill switched which one he prefers between the first and the second choice. So that is a warp violation, and that's what we're gonna talk about how to figure out. So that's the basic idea of warp. Now let's talk about it graphically. So if we think about warp graphically, what we have is we have a budget constraint. So this blue line, BC1, and what's gonna happen is Bill or the consumer is gonna pick their most favorite bundle that's affordable to them. Maybe it's green X star. And so what's happening is if this is the preferred bundle, then all of these other bundles that I've highlighted in pink, including the budget constraint, those were all available to Bill. So what we're saying is out of all of these affordable bundles, this green X star was our most preferred bundle. So X star must be better than all of these other affordable bundles, both under the budget constraint and on the budget constraint. So if we think about sort of warp and income changes, then suppose that we have a loss in income. Suppose that our income goes down. And so maybe our income goes down to something like this. And so this is going to be BC2. Okay, this is important because one of the things with work that we talked about with the pies was that both apple and berry pie were both available both times. But when you have an income change, it's not necessarily true that every option is going to be available both times. Specifically, what I mean is that all of these bundles in here between the two budget constraints, so not touching, but in between, all of these bundles were affordable to bill under BC1 but are not affordable to bill under budget constraint two. So suppose, for example, that this is X star two. Now, when we go from X star one to X star two, if our budget changes from blue to red, then notice that in the red budget constraint, under the red budget constraint, this green dot is not available to us. And so it's not a warp violation if we go from X one star to X two star. So it's not, so this is not a warp violation because the reason it's not a warp violation is because in budget constraint two, because our most preferred bundle X1 star was not available under the red budget constraint. And so we chose this bundle that was affordable to us and that's totally fine. Now, if we back up a little bit and we say, suppose that what's happening is we have a third budget. So maybe this budget constraint here, this is BC3. Suppose under budget constraint three, this is what we choose. We choose X star three. Okay, so now what's happening is I'm gonna say, if we go from BC1 to BC3, under BC1, we chose X1 star, and under BC3, we chose X3 star. Well, notice that both bundles are affordable to us under both budgets. Both X1 star and X3 star were available both under BC1 and BC3. So it is gonna be a warp violation because what's happening is you reversed your preferences even though both bundles were affordable to you under both sets of prices and both incomes. So that is going to be a warp violation. 
So again, with income changes, you really have to be careful. What are you choosing and what was affordable to you under both budget constraints? And again, if there are questions, feel free to put those in the comments below. We can do something very similar with price changes. And so again, we have BC1, we have X1 star. Suppose the price of Y gets more expensive. And so now we move here. So maybe here's BC2. I'm going to put this over here just so it's a little easier to read. So we have BC2 and BC1. And maybe under this budget constraint, we again, maybe I'll do this in red. We choose X2 star. And again, when we move from budget constraint one to budget constraint two, under budget constraint two, our best optimal green star, X1 star bundle is not available. It's not affordable to us. And so just because we choose a different bundle is not a warp violation because under BC2, X1 star is not affordable to us. So it's not part of our choice set. On the other hand, suppose that we have a BC3 in which Y gets cheaper. So this is going to be sort of badly drawn because I'm sort of running out of an axis. So this curve here, this is BC3. And now suppose under BC3 that what I choose is I decide to choose this point here. This is going to be X3 star. Then once again, what's happening is under both BC1 and BC3, both bundles were affordable under both budget constraints and I'm changing which one I'm picking, okay? And that does not make sense. That's the warp violation because X3 star and X1 star are available both under BC1 and BC3. So I should not be changing which bundle is my optimal bundle. If X1 star is really my optimal bundle under both budget constraints, I should choose it at the same time. I shouldn't change which one I'm buying. Now, on the other hand, just to make this a little more clear, if I choose something like say here, suppose I choose X4 star. Now, if I choose X4 star, I'm no longer violating warp because when I move from BC1 to BC3, when I go to BC3, this X4 star is not affordable to me under my original prices or BC1. And so it makes sense that I change my bundle because there's a new set of affordable bundles. That X4 star is in my new set of affordable bundles that was not affordable to me before. And therefore, I'm not going to violate warp. So again, this is price changes. If you have questions or comments, feel free to put those below. So, so far we've been talking about warp graphically, but you can also think about warp algebraically. And so all we're gonna do is we're basically going to evaluate which bundles were affordable under what circumstances. We're gonna think about the choices we made and we're gonna see if we violate warp or not. So just as a basic example, suppose we've got two goods. On day one, we have coconuts and popsicles. Coconuts cost $2 and popsicles cost $4. And we say that Bill buys the bundle two, two. Then on day two, suppose coconuts again cost $2, but now popsicles have dropped in price to $2, and Bill is going to buy the bundle 3 3. We're asked to think about is Bill violating warp or not? So, what we're going to do is we're going to break this down into two time periods T equals one when popsicles cost $4 and coconuts cost $2, and T equals two when coconuts cost $2 and popsicles cost $2. We're going to think about the two bundles, how much they cost in each time period, see if both bundles were available to Bill under both prices or not and then determine if he violated one. So if we start at T equals one, when coconuts cost $2 and popsicles cost $4, we said that Bill bought the bundle two, two. So we're gonna say that Bill had to have at least $12. He had to have at least $12 because he could buy the bundle. And so we don't know necessarily that Bill had more than $12 or not, but we're gonna assume sort of that that's his max wealth that he had with him. If we think about the three, three bundle that he could have bought on day one, well, the price of the bundle three, three at prices two, four would have cost $18. So we could say, well, it's probably the case that that bundle was not affordable to Bill on day one. It's probably why he chose two, two and not three, three. And now we can do the same thing on day two. So on day two, when the prices are each $2, if Bill would have bought the bundle two, two, that would have cost him $8. To buy the bundle three, three, that cost him $12. So notice that both two, two and three, three are affordable to Bill on day two. But of course, both bundles were not affordable to Bill on day one. So this is not going to be a warp violation because the bundle 3-3 was not affordable to Bill on day one. So the fact that he chose it on day two, it's not like he's switching preferences. It's just that that bundle wasn't affordable to him on day one. And now the prices change and on day two, he can afford that bundle 3-3. And so that's the bundle he picks. And so that's basically how you can figure out if Bill commits a warp violation or not. So that's just an algebraic example. Again, hopefully this makes warp or the weak axiom of real preference make a little more sense. Feel free to look back at that original video, see if you can spot the error that I made in that video without looking at the comment. And again, if these videos in general are helping you out, please like and subscribe. We'll see you next time for another case of Econ Struggles.